In this video, I'll be teaching you about graphs of motions, which is about distance time graphs, and we'll start right now. Hello everyone, my name is Shirley and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to improve in your math skills, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. Let's take a look at what is a distance time graph. Let's understand what is a distance time graph. The vertical axis of the graph represents the distance, whereas the horizontal axis represents the time. And the gradient of the graph represents the rate of change of distance with respect to time, and it is also called speed. Let's look at the graph given here. So OA is positive gradient and it represents the speed. So I'm going to write it over here. So for this, OA, it means positive gradient. Okay, and it represents the speed. Okay, and it also means that it's motion at uniform speed. Okay, now let's look at AB. So as you see here, AB is a horizontal line. It means that the gradient is zero. So for this zero gradient, it means that the object is stationary. Stationary means not moving, okay? So the object is stationary. And it means the motion stops. Okay, now let's look at the line BC. So BC is a positive gradient. This line, okay, it shows positive gradient. Okay, and it means that the motion continues to C. To C, okay? So now let's move on to the next graph, okay, which is over here. Okay, for OP, the line is going upwards. It means that it's positive gradient. Okay, it means that the motion for a distance of S meters, okay, in a period of T1 seconds. How to find the S meters is you look at this graph, the maximum is S. So that is the distance traveled, okay, within the period of T1 seconds. So I'm going to write it over here. So motion for a distance, okay, of S meters in a period of T1 seconds. Okay, so now let's look at PQ. So PQ is a horizontal line. It means that it's stationary and the motion stops, okay? Okay, so for here, I'm going to write it over here. Okay, so it's zero gradient. Okay, it means that it's stationary. Okay, it means that the motion stops. Okay, now let's look at the third line, which is QR. The line is going downwards, it means it's negative gradient. So if it's negative gradient, it means that it's going, the object is going back to its original position or in the opposite direction. Okay, so I'm going to write it down. So for this line, QR is negative gradient. Okay, so it's showing that the object Okay, moves back to original place or in the opposite direction. Okay. 
Okay, now let's look at the following example. Let's look at example number one. The distance time graph shows the motion of a car and the tour bus. Graph OA represents the motion of car from Puchong to Malacca. Graph BC represents the motion of the tour bus from Malacca to Puchong. So determine the difference in speed in kilometers per hour of the two vehicles. Okay, so for this, I'm going to find the speed of the car. After that, I'm going to minus the speed of the bus and then we get the answer. Okay, so why I use, why I use car minus bus because car is definitely can travel faster than the bus. Okay, so I'm going to find the speed of the car first. So the speed of the car is represented by the line OA, okay, so I'm going to use 150 minus 0 over 2 minus 0, okay, so 150 divided by 2 is 75 kilometers per hour. Okay, now I'm going to find the speed of the bus. Okay, so the speed of the bus is represented by the line BC, which is the green line, so it's going to be 150 minus 0. Okay, over, so this is uh, 3 minus 0, okay, so 150 divided by 3 is 50, so it's 50 kilometers per hour. So to find the difference, okay, between the speed, so difference in speed, okay, I'm going to use 75 minus 50 and both is in kilometer per hour. And the answer is 25 kilometers per hour. So that's the answer. Let's look at example number two. The distance time graph shows the motion of a car for a period of four and a half hours. A. Determine the duration of when the car is stationary and the speed in kilometers per hour of the car in the first hour and B, describe the motion of the car for the last 90 minutes. Okay, so first I'm going to find when the duration, okay, the duration when the car is stationary means we're going to find the horizontal line. So where's the horizontal line? The horizontal line is over here. Okay, it's over here. So the duration of the time is over here. Okay, so this is one hour. So I'm going to write the working over here. So A1, okay, the duration is equals to three minus two is one hour. Okay, that's pretty easy. So let's look at number two. Okay, the speed in kilometers per hour of the car in the first hour. So in the first hour, it's going to be here. Okay, so I'm going to make a right angle triangle. I'm going to find the gradient of this. Okay, so this gradient is the same as the gradient of this triangle. Okay, so it has the same speed. So I'm going to find the speed by finding the gradient. So it's 150 minus zero, okay, over two minus zero. Okay, so 150 divided by 2 is 75. So 75 kilometers per hour. Okay, now let's look at B. Okay, describe the motion of the car for the last 90 minutes. 90 minutes means it's one and a half hours. Okay, 90 minutes means it's over here, which is from 3 to 4.5. Okay, so this is 1.5 hour, which is 90 minutes. Okay, this is one hour just now. Okay, one hour. Yeah. So I'm going to find the speed first. So find the speed, okay? The speed of this, okay? This line, okay? Because it's 4.5, so it's going to be this triangle. I'm going to find this, this uh, gradient, yeah? To get the speed. So I'm going to use 270 minus 150, okay? Because I need to find this over this, okay? So 270 minus 150 over the time, okay? Because speed is distance over time, yeah? So the time in hour will be 4.5 minus 3, okay? So 270 minus 150 over 4.5 minus 3. So when we use the calculator, we get 80 kilometers per hour, okay? So how to describe this in one statement, okay? So I'm going to write a statement over here. So it means that, so therefore, okay, the car, travels how far uh, travels for okay so from here to here okay i'm going to use 270 minus 150 so i'll get 120 kilometers okay so 120 kilometers so the car travels for 120 kilometers okay with a speed so with 
a speed of Okay, so here we got 80 kilometers per hour. So of 80 kilometers per hour, okay, in the last, how many minutes? 90 minutes, okay, which is the one and a half hours, yeah? In the last 90 minutes. So that is the answer. Let's look at example number three. Encik Jamal goes to Padang Besar with his family. During the return journey to Jitra, they stop at Bukit Kayu Hitam for a tea break. The distance time graph shows the return journey from Padang Besar to Jitra. Okay, which means that this is Padang Besar and this is Bukit Kayu Hitam, whereby they stop for a while for tea break. And then after that, they continue to their destination in Jitra here. Okay, so A, calculate the duration in which Inche Jama's car is stationary. So stationary means we find where is the horizontal line. So horizontal line is over here. Okay, and the duration of time is from here to here. Okay, so I'm going to write the answer over here. So A, the answer for duration is 55 minus 30, okay, which is 25 minutes. Okay, so next to find B1, Determine the value of P, okay, and also calculate the distance between Padabasa and Bukit Kayu Hitam. So they say that it's given the average speed is 66 kilometers per hour. So from Padabasa to Bukit Kayu Hitam, which means that this line, okay, and this line is negative, negative gradient. Okay, so we're going to find, to find, to determine the value of P, I'm going to use the average speed that they give us, okay, which is the gradient of the graph of the line. Yeah, so I'm going to use speed. Okay, so be careful, the speed is in negative huh? because the graph is going downwards, so it's a negative gradient. Okay, so I'm going to find the gradient of this. So this divided by this, okay? So it will be P minus 60 over, so 30 minus 0, but be careful because this is in minutes. So you have to convert to hour. So one minute is 60, okay, you have to divide it by 60. Okay, so convert from minutes to hour, you divide it by 60. So divide by 60 here, so equals to negative 66, okay? So 30 divided by 60 is 0 0.5. So we use the calculator. Okay, so negative 66 divided by uh, times 0 0.5. Okay, so we will get a negative 33. So P minus 60 is negative 33. Okay, after that, we bring over the negative 60 over to the right-hand side. So we plus 60. So we will get P is equal to 27. So that's the answer for B1. Okay, let's move on to B2. Calculate the distance between Padang Besar and Bukit Kayu Hitam. So the distance, so since we already get here is 27, so the distance will be from here to here. So I'm going to find the difference, okay? So the difference is 60 minus 27. So this is quite easy. So B2, so the distance would be 60 minus 27, okay? Okay, so 60 minus 7 minus 27 is, the answer is 33. Okay, so it's 33 kilometers. Okay, so that's the answer for B2. Now, let's move on to C. If, the, if Injit Jamal drives at an average speed of 64.8 km per hour for the return journey from Bukit Kayu Hitam to his house in Jitra, which means that we have to find the gradient of this line. Okay, so I'm going to change to pink colour first. Eh? Okay, give me a sec. Okay, so C. I'm going to write the working here. Okay, so we have to find the gradient of this line. Okay, so to find the gradient of that line, okay, so here I'm going to write the average speed first. Okay, the speed is, uh, be careful because the line is going downwards, so it's a negative gradient. So therefore, the speed will be negative 64.8. Okay, negative 64.8. So we're going to find the gradient of this graph, so I'm going to use this over this. Okay, so that would be 27. Okay, 0 minus 27 over t minus 55 but you have to convert to hour so you divide it by 60 equals to negative 64.8 okay and then so i'm going to use negative 27 times with the 60 at the bottom okay so i will get so 27 times with 60 so i will get 1620 <clears throat> negative 1620 okay then i bring over the t minus 55 to the right hand side okay so negative 64.8, okay, times with t minus 55, okay? So I will have to solve this. I expand the bracket. So I'll get negative 64.8t, 
minus so 64.8 times with 55 <coughs> 64.8 times with 55 so I will get 3564 and it's positive okay because negative negative is positive yeah so it's 3564 okay and then I group them up together so the 64 negative 64.8 t I can bring over to the left hand side so it becomes 64.8 t positive okay then I'm going to add the bring over the negative 1620 to the right hand side so I plus together okay so I'll get 5 let me see it's 3564 plus 1620 so I will get 5184 okay so 5184, okay, so to find T, I'm going to divide. So 5184 divided by 64.8, so we will get 80, okay? So we will get 80, so that will be the value of T. So 80, which means here is 80, okay? So let's solve the last one, which is calculate the average speed for the whole journey. For the whole journey, it means that, okay, I'm going to use the total distance over the total time, okay, to find the average speed, okay? So I'm going to write the working here, yeah? So the average speed, okay, will be the total distance. So total distance, how to find is, I'm going to find the maximum value of the y-axis, which is 60, okay? So 60 in kilometers, okay, over. So the total time is, just now we have found that is 80, 80 over here, let's look at the graph, okay? It's 80 minutes, but we have to convert to hour, which means that we have to divide it by 60, okay? So it's gonna be 80 over 60, and this whole thing is in hour. Okay, let's calculate this, okay? Let's calculate the time first, which is 80 divided by 60. It's actually four over three. So I'm gonna use 60 divided by four over three, so I will get 45 kilometers per hour. Okay, so 45 kilometers per hour. Ta-da! So we got the answer ready. Now that you've mastered everything about distance time graph, it's time for you to learn the next part, which is speed time graph, coming up soon in my next video. Bye!